I'm Thomas Smith, and from the very early days, I've been an OpenAI beta tester, and I just got access to the new browse version of ChatGPT. So I'm trying this out for the first time uh, yesterday, and I've been experimenting with it a bit, and it's a, a very cool addition to ChatGPT. Basically, they've connected ChatGPT to the live internet. So before, you were limited to data that had been trained on up to 2021. Now that limitation is gone with this new alpha update. You can see, you can select this at ChatGPT+. Plus. You can go from GPT-4, the most uh, up-to-date model, to this experimental browsing model. Um, and then it's actually going to be able to connect to the internet, browse the web, and, uh, and find information to share with you there. So let's go ahead and try it out here if I want to type in something like, tell me about the new version of uh, ChatGPT. I'll say GPT, GPT-4. Go to the OpenAI website to learn about it. So before, if you'd asked it about GPT-4, it didn't know anything about it because it had been released like last month or this month, I guess it is now, and uh, you know, it wasn't available in 2021 when this was being trained. However, now hopefully it'll be able to go. I haven't tried this prompt before. We'll see what it does. You can see it's going to say browsing the web. Um, it's going out and connecting to that site, um, and you can actually click on this and see what it's looking at. Um, so you can actually follow its browse path. Now, one thing you'll notice, it is very, very slow. Um, this is something I've definitely seen throughout my testing here. It's extremely slow of doing this right now. However, uh, here we go. Here's the output from it. Yeah, so it's accurate information to be able to pass the simulated bar exam, top 10%. This is all information from the live web versus um, if we go to the, the sort of stock version of ChatGPT, which is of course GPT-4, and enter the same prompt, it's probably gonna either make something up or it's just gonna say, hey, I was only trained through 2021, you know, I don't know this information. Uh, so it's gonna say, yeah, I can't access the internet, uh, can't browse websites, uh, you know, the standard disclaimers. So as you can see, it's pretty cool. You can go and access live up-to-date information. And I tested a few things to see, you know, how this could actually work in the real world. And so I don't want to um, bore you with sitting and waiting while it loads stuff, since again, it's super slow. Uh, so I've got a couple here that I can pull up that we can just look at that I already ran. So this is a good example um, when it's a read a blog post about is Fitbit waterproof? Um, there's been new Fitbit models since 2021. So I said, you know, go to this help article on the Fitbit site, make a list, um, and it went ahead and did that. There's some weird information and hallucinations like this was says it really was released in 2000. <laughs> Fitbit didn't even exist in 2000. So still got to fact check things, especially when it's connected to the live internet. You got to fact check it, but it will pick up the newer models, the things that weren't necessarily available in 2021 when it was trained, new information. Another really cool thing, I think this is a really powerful capability for bloggers. I sent it to my publication on Medium, The Generator, and I said, write a roundup blog post on the most recent articles. And in fact, it went ahead and did that. It pulled them down and put the titles. It went to each of the articles and read it. And then it wrote a summary of each of those in here. And this is pretty accurate. There's a couple things that it sort of smashed together. Again, fact check stuff. But the ability to write a roundup post, I think, is super cool. Um, another one, I tried writing a kind of a generic affiliate marketing article. I don't really like these kinds of articles where people just sort of take what's on the Amazon page and spin it into a review, but it's pretty prevalent on the internet. So I tested that out. I handed it a, a list of, or rather a, a link to um, an article about this dripper hose on Amazon and said, you know, hey, write me a, uh, an affiliate marketing article from this. And in fact, it did that. It does the best features, worst features. It read the reviews to write this. This is sort of what people do when they spin uh, an Amazon page. And it's actually a fairly useful article in some ways. Like I could see handing it, once this is integrated into the full chat GPT, handing it a, a URL for a product and saying, you know, write me a list. What are the pros and cons of this product? And obviously that stuff changes all the time. So it's really great to have it be able to access the live internet um, when it is trying to do that. Um, one thing I thought it could be cool for was uh, doing you know, research to find for outreach for link building for niche website builders. Uh, so I tried to hand it a, a, a query about, you know, here's a blog post I wrote, find a contact email for the uh, business mentioned in there. And you know you could write the blog post, and then you could find use it to find the contact email, and then reach out and say, "Hey, I wrote this blog post. Do you want to link to it?" I tried that. It hung up. It didn't seem to do that well. 
Then I handed it the name of the business. Interestingly, it says that this website is protected by Cloudflare and it can't access that because it can't do the JavaScript required for that. So limitation there, um, it appears if there's complex JavaScript on the page, then it's, it's web browser struggles and it can't really do that. Likewise, some generic, like I asked for news articles about, uh, this is, I kept asking it more stuff, uh, news articles about Lafayette, California. Um, couldn't really process that. I think I'd have to give it like a specific website. However, um, some of those, you know, more sort of generic uh, queries where you hand the URL and say, hey, summarize this or write about it, that type of thing, it seemed to do a really good job. I think the most exciting thing, probably that, you know, that article roundup, like that's really cool to be able to hand it your blog and say, write me a roundup article or hand it a link to a publication, maybe your competitor and say, hey, write me a roundup article about the stuff on here and that kind of thing. Um, so very, very cool new capabilities. I think the biggest thing that has to happen has to get a lot faster. Right now it's so slow. I'd rather just go and copy paste the information in and say, you know, write an article based on this from the live web page. But when that gets faster and also when it's integrated into the API, you know, right now the API is stuck in 2021, essentially. ChatGPT Plus, you can iterate and you can talk to it. But if you're trying to drive, generate anything programmatically and access the web, you can't do that at the moment. So I think that's another really cool capability uh, that I'm looking forward to seeing is that if, the, the API has access through the browse functionality, then you can do these things like summarizing live articles or fact checking or entering in citations and that kind of thing. So very cool. Looking forward to continuing to test these new beta functions. If you found this helpful, please do subscribe to my channel. That really helps. And uh, click through, I'll include the link to my full write-up. I've got more screenshots and more examples over at the generator.